Hello everybody, welcome to my video on utility maximization. We've got a consumer who's got to choose between two goods. Uh, in this example, they've got $36. Good X costs four, good, good Y costs nine. And the consumer has a standard Cobb Douglas type utility function, X to the point four, Y to the point six. The steps that I'm going to show you could be applied to any prices or any utility function. Doesn't particularly matter. I do this just because it makes for a straightforward video. And so what we're going to be doing is first we're going to choose his optimal level of good X and good Y. And then I'm going to change the price of Y down to 8 and see how that changes things. So first of all, we want to look at our special graph. And what we see is an in, indifference in curve and a budget constraint and a budget constraint. The budget constraint, as you hopefully remember, should look like this. I is equal to PX times good X plus PY times good Y. In this case, 36 is equal to 4X plus 9Y. If I spend all my money on good X, I can buy nine of them. If I don't buy any X and I spend all my money on good Y, I can buy four of them. And let's see. For the indifference curve, notice I drew it where there is an exact point of tangency, meaning those two curves have the same slope and they're just barely touching each other. They touch but don't cross. This is really important. If I made them touch and cross each other, something like this, if I'm on this second indifference curve, I drew this lame one, I can still be on my budget constraint spending all my money at either of those two points, but I will not have as high of utility as if I choose this point. This is our good point. Those points suck. So, uh, pictures aside, let's talk math because that's why you're really here. You can all, anyone can draw these pictures. Um, well, first thing I want to do, I want to figure out how to set the slopes of those two equations equal to each other. I'm going to start with the budget constraint since I have it up here already. If I want to get the slope of this line, I need to solve this function just for y. Because uh, that's what it uh, graphically looks like up here in our picture. So let's see, I'm going to go 36 minus 4x equals 9y. 4 minus 4 ninths x equals y. The slope of it e is equal to minus 4 over 9. Now that slope will always be minus px over py. No matter what numbers I plug in, you can always remember that. Or you can actually solve for it all the way if you want to. But either way, the slope of it's minus 4, 9. Alright, next. We need the slope of our indifference curve. And this one gets a little uglier. Because our indifference curve is nonlinear. So, let's take a look. Uh, we need some calculus. If you're in my class without calculus, don't worry. It's only going to be one extra step. Uh, the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the negative MRS from X to Y. Uh, let's see. Which is equal to negative marginal utility of X or marginal utility of Y which is equal to negative derivative of our utility function with respect to x over the derivative of our utility function with respect to y, which is equal to minus 0.4x to the negative 0.6y to the 0.6 over 0.6 x to the point 0.4 y to the negative point 0.4. Now, if you're in an econ class without calculus, 
they will already give you these marginal utility functions and you're not going to have to solve this part. Uh, and if you are, well, there you go. You got the extra step. Actually. Uh, but now we've got this, and this is fair territory for anyone, whether or not I ask you to do calculus. And so we got to figure out how to reduce this ugly thing. Because uh, I don't want to deal with it like that. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of some negative exponents because those get confusing. So negative 0.4. Let's see, when I see a negative exponent, I can flip what side of the fraction it's on. So I can put this x to the negative 0.6 in the numerator in the denominator. And likewise, my y to the negative 0.4 can be a y to the 0.4 in the numerator. All I've done is move the negatives to the other side of the fraction to get rid of their negative sign. And then this looks really easy after that. Uh, 0.4 over 0.6, oops, uh, y over x, which is, oops, I forgot my negative sign, which is negative 2 over 3 y over x. Notice the slope of this curved line depends very much on where we are on our y and x. And that's what makes it a little more complicated. But nevertheless, we have a slope. The slope of the indifference curves is minus 2 thirds y over x. And so I'm going to set the slope of the indifference curve equal to the slope of my budget constraint. And that is the first part of finding this special point. Those two lines have the same slope. Let's see, slope of my indifference curve, minus 2 thirds y over x. Slope of budget constraint, minus 4 over 9. Uh, let's see, I'm going to cancel out those negatives. And then y is equal to, let's see, 3 halves times 4 nine, four ninths of x, which is 2 thirds of x. And so we get this ratio here, y equals 2 thirds x, which means in order for these two lines to share the same slope, there must be 2 thirds as much y as there is x. And that's it. It doesn't give us the full information of how much y or how much x, but it means in order for those things to have the same slope, which is a necessary condition for maximizing utility, we need this ratio. Now to get the exact value of it, I can just substitute it to find the exact point where these two have the same slope and they touch each other. So I'm gonna substitute that ratio into the budget constraint. Let's see, so it was 36 equals 4x plus 9y, which is 4x plus 9 times, well, y is 2 thirds of x, so that's 4x plus 6x, which is 10x, which means that x, the actual optimal value, is equal to 3.6. And y is two-thirds of that, remember, two-thirds of that, so the optimal value of y is equal to 2.4. And there we go. That is the bundle of x and y that will make this person as happy as can be, given their budget constraint. Now, what happens if the price of y moves eight. Well, it changes our budget constraint. The new slope of the budget constraint, let's see, it's minus px over py. px didn't change, it's still four. Four over eight, so just minus one half. My preferences didn't change, my utility function didn't change, so my MRS didn't change. The MRS is still 
uh, slope of the indifference curve is the negative of the MRS. It's still minus two thirds. Two thirds y over x. And so I'm just going to do the same steps again, reflecting the new slope of the budget constraint. Minus two over three y over x is equal to minus one half, uh, which means that. Uh, let's see. Let's solve this thing. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so negatives cancel out. Three, so y is equal to three halves times one half x. So y is equal to three fourths of x. So whatever income level I have, I want that ratio to hold with these prices and this utility function. So I can substitute this into the budget constraint. 36 is equal to four x plus 8y, remember we ch change the price of y, which is 4x plus 8 times 3 fourths of x, which is 4x plus 6x, which is 10x. So once again, x is equal to 3.6. But now, our y function, uh, y is 3 fourths of that, and 3 fourths of 3.6 is 2.7. And 2.7 is greater than our last y star, which is 2.4. Now, the exact way that these numbers came out just depends on my utility function that I choose. But what we see is that by changing the slope of the budget constraint, we change where those two lines are tangent to each other, we change the bundle, and it will induce a shift, a relative shift towards Y. Uh, yep, so that's pretty much it for this utility max thing. I hope it was useful to you, and if not, too bad.